Hi guys, this is a new installation and quick setup guide for the Unreal Engine 3D Draper plugin release candidate. As usual, run the 3D Draper setup program on the computer where you plan to use the Draper plugin. Optionally, select for which versions of the Unreal Engine you want to install the plugin. If for some reason our setup program cannot find the path to your Unreal Engine, add Draper plugin options will be disabled and you will be prompted to select the your Unreal Engine location. Select your Unreal Engine installation folder manually. Usually it's in your program files, Epic Games and then the UE version you want to use. Proceed with the installation and the Draper plugin will be installed into the Engine, Plugins folder. You can also install the plugins manually. Open the 3D Draper installation folder and find the UE subfolder that contains the plugins for different UE versions. Copy the corresponding version Draper folder into your Engine Plugins folder, or your Projects Plugins folder. If you are going to use the plugin with C++ projects, please refer to the README file located in the UE installation subfolder. You can download 3D Draper sample garment files from the OneDrive link we sent you. The samples were prepared for the DAWs and MetaHuman characters. At the beginning, try just a few separate garment files. Place the garment files you've downloaded into a designated folder. If the 3D Draper has been installed and registered correctly, you can double-click and open one of the sample files. Click on the plus button to open the Content Explorer. Specify the folder where you placed your 3D Draper files. Make sure the Autosave Settings button is on in the Preference general section to keep your settings the same the next time you open the program. Now in your Unreal Editor, open the plugins and enable the Draper plugin. Restart your project if needed. Let's add a simple character skeletal mesh to our scene. As you can see it has 18,000 vertices, which might still work for the real-time cloth simulation but you might also want to create more LODs with lower number of vertices. It can be done quickly using the tools available in any Unreal Editor or in more advanced way for instance using Maya. Click Add Component in the Detail panel for our Character Mesh and start typing Draper. Select Draper Simulation. In the Collider section, you can select the LOD for the Collider Mesh you want to use. After the recent update, the MetaHuman preview meshes don't have the whole body with the head anymore. This prompts us to advance the Collider Mesh functionality to handle two or more body parts together as one Collider Mesh if they have similar skeletons. So for the complex characters, add the Draper Skeletal Mesh component first. Then specify an array of the mesh parts to form the whole mesh to be used for the cloth collisions. You now need to add the MetaHuman body and the head into the array and specify the LOD for each one separately. We found the LOD1 for the body and LOD3 for the head work well. However, it can still be improved by creating special meshes for the head with a simplified face, and the body with simplified hands and feet. Now, we need to add the Draper simulation to the Draper Skeletal Mesh component. Before exporting the Collider Mesh for the 3D Draper, you can now specify its orientation and position. Since we've already specified the LODs for the parts of the Collider, the default LOD in the Draper simulation component will be ignored. You might also want to select a different pose for your character body. Here we select a fitting, or an A pose, with the straight arms for easier sleeve draping. Click the Export Collider button. You might see an information dialog about the Collider Mesh structure. Click Yes to proceed with the export or Yes All if you don't want to see these messages in the future. Select the location for the Avatar Mesh to be exported in OBJ format. To import the Collider Mesh in 3D Draper, simply select File, Import, OBJ, and select the file we just exported. 
You can also click the Open 3D Draper button, which will launch the 3D Draper and have the avatar already imported for you. If you want a specific avatar to stay open, you need to check the Preserve Avatar box in the Preferences, General section. In this case, that avatar will stay open even if you load garments saved with different mannequins. Now let's design some clothes in 3D Draper for your character. You can design your own garments or use the 3D Draper sample files. Refer to videos linked in the description below for the basic 3D Draper functionality. Open one of the sample files. Adjust the 2D pattern sizes and 3D positions around the avatar as needed. Run the simulation and if required adjust the garment position on the avatar. With the simulation running, export the 3D garment draped around your character into a specified location to be used in Unreal Engine Draper plugin. The exported garment will be stored as a separate folder, which contains all the garment files such as the 3D mesh textures, metadata, and so on. Now we can import the clothes for your character in Unreal Editor. Add the Draper garment to the Draper simulation component. Let's name it Pants. Add another Draper garment and name it Jacket. The order of the garments in this list is treated as layers, so, the first garment will be kept underneath the second garment and so on. Click the three dot button for each Draper garment and select the folders where you exported the garments. You should see the garments loaded and positioned on your character. Let's use the animation sequence and animate our character. In this example, we have a fast moving wheel kick animation. First, click the play this level button. Note that the cloth simulation takes a couple of seconds to initialize. Now, we can click play the sequence. As you can see, the cloth simulation wasn't fast enough for this kick, which resulted in the fabrics got teared from the leg. The cloth tear can also happen when parts of the character mesh are crossing each other, or the cloth gets pinched in the armpits under elbows or knees. To protect the clothes from wear and tear we've introduced the cloth binding. Let's open the Draper Editor panel by clicking on the Edit button for your garment. Then, expand the Physical Properties section. You can see the binding settings at the bottom. The tolerance controls how close the cloth vertices should be to the avatar surface to get bound. The distance controls how far the bound vertices can move from their bound state. The stiffness controls how easy the fabric can move within the given distance. Once we set up the binding parameters, we need to save the fabric settings. Then, if needed, configure binding for other materials used in the garment. Let's play the animation again. Now the fabric doesn't get tiered because of the binding. The binding can also be configured in the 3D Draper before exporting the garment. This is a very quick introduction to the cloth binding functionality. An advanced tutorial should be available shortly. Let's take a look how you can modify or create materials using the Draper Editor. Once more, Open the Draper Editor panel by clicking on the Edit button for your garment. At the top, you can see all the characters with the Draper simulation components. It's now easy to switch between them instead of searching for them in the World Outliner. When we design garments in 3D Draper, we create and configure materials and assign them to specific patterns. In Unreal Editor, we can also edit these materials in the Draper Editor. Among other material properties such as base color, normal, roughness, and metallic, you can vary the fabric thickness. To apply your new settings, click the Save button next to the material name. If you want to save this fabric settings, click the Save button in the Fabric Preset section. The new preset will be saved in the TIFF format, which you can load next time either in Unreal Editor or 3D Draper when you want to use it. For example, I can load another fabric preset that was created earlier. Here we have the fabric assets imported using the Quixel Bridge. 
we drag and drop the albedo map to the base color texture, the normal map to the normal texture, and the ORD map to the roughness texture. The ORD map contains the roughness map in the green channel, so, we select the G channel for to be used for the roughness texture. You can also use your color map as the pattern texture and adjust the detail mask and detail power for the advanced fabric effects. And last but not least, you might want to adjust the Fresnel properties to make it look more like a fussy or a shiny leather fabric. In this version, we've implemented UV wrapping for 3D garments, which allows wearing the same garment on different avatar with the same UV maps. These pants are created in 3D draper for the medium size meta human female. Now we can put it on the tall and underweight model. You will be prompted if you want to use the UV mapping. The garment will look a little distorted, but when you start the simulation, it will be relaxed. During the simulation, the relaxed garment can now be saved to fit well on the designated avatar. You might want to make a copy of this garment if you want to use it for other avatar sizes as well, but it is not mandatory. We can also run the simulation by clicking play your level in the selected viewport, new editor window, or standalone game. During the play mode, you can use your cursor to move the fabric and adjust the garment position on the mannequin. Please consider the following. The cloth simulation takes some time to initialize. So, if your animation starts with fast movements, the simulation may not catch up. In this case consider slowing down the first few seconds of your animation. For example, start from a static pose, or add some slow movements at the beginning. For a multi-GPU system, you can designate a specific GPU for the cloth simulation by selecting the bus number for that GPU. Negative 1 correspond to the default GPU.